Now, as we look at uh, the scene where Jesus was born, uh, there's talk about a star that appears in the sky. And uh, I'm going to talk about that for a little bit here. In Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, uh, the Magi visit the Messiah. So, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod uh, heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and chief teachers of the laws, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has was written. For you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. So I'm going to take a moment to talk about this star, because there's some interesting... Uh, theories that are floating around out there. We, we, we don't know exactly uh, how this might have happened, but we have some ways to make educated guesses. And um, so, uh, number one, it can't be a meteor because... Uh, you know, a meteor is a chunk of space rock that brightly burns up in the Earth's atmosphere, and then it would have appeared and faded in an instant. So three wise men couldn't track a meteor for weeks. Number two, most likely it's not a supernova. The explosive death of a star, which drastically increases its brightness for days, weeks, or months, if that happened, other cultures likely would have recorded it. And nobody did during that time period. The closest we have is uh, is there was a supernova uh, in 185 um, A.D. Um, and and that was recorded by uh, Chinese astrologers. Um, uh, number three, a Christmas comet. Hmm. In 5 B.C., Chinese astronomers noted the appearance of a broom star. And that's, that's pretty much what a comet looks like. Um, the problem is, is that most people saw comets, comets I'm sorry, as a sign of pending doom, as an evil omen. And now you remember the Magi, they came from the east. So, uh, and, and, you know, they, they believed in, um, you know, astrology. Uh, and, um, so uh, they, if they saw that, if and 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 that's what they were following, they they would have uh, thought of it as an evil omen, and they probably would not be searching uh, for the king. So th this was something entirely different, and probably something that doesn't happen too often. Um, and so we get to the final um, uh, idea. And in 3 BC, uh, using software to track uh, planet movements, um, it's, uh, it's been theorized that Jupiter and Venus uh, cross paths 
in the earth's sky at the time that Jesus would have been born. And uh, on the morning of August 12, 3 BC, uh, Jupiter and Venus danced around each other until they merged into a single star in June of next year. So that would have been maybe around 4 BC. And that single star would have been about one-fifth the diameter of the moon, and it would have shown um, brightly, maybe even brighter, uh, uh, than the moon. Um, because you had light that was bouncing off two planets. And so if we look at this picture here, um, using the software, uh, this would have been what the sky would have looked like uh, back in the time of... Uh, when Jesus was born. You had Saturn and Jupiter uh, there on the horizon shining very, very brightly together. And and then you see uh, Copernicus and Aquarius. And then uh, Aquarius is my sign, so maybe that's a good sign. I don't know. <laughs> and then you had the moon, you know, which is uh, on the far left corner there. And, and actually the moon is not very bright uh, when you compare it to Saturn and Jupiter, and yeah, it, it is. It, that star appears to be one-fifth the size of the moon. And that would have hung up there for, you know, for probably, uh, you know, well, at least uh, it would have hung around for about a month or so. Maybe, you know, they said August to June. And, uh, well, you're saying, well, you know, was it Jean, Jesus born on Christmas? Well, not really. <laughs> You see, um, we didn't really have a birthday for Jesus, and we don't really know when his birthday was, and most likely he was not born in Christmas. Um, and, uh, you know, when, when the Christians uh, uh, decided they, they needed to, you know, celebrate um, birth uh, of the new year, they, that's where they set it. They set it right on, on that day. Apparently there were pagan holidays that went around um, the same time. And so uh, the Christians thought, well, why don't we just celebrate our, our uh, you know, the birth of our, of our Messiah. We'll celebrate it on the same day as, as, the, as the pagans are celebrating their, uh, um, their holidays. So in John chapter 8, uh, verses 48 through 59, um, Jesus talks about himself and Abraham. And I'm going to read a little bit about from the Bible uh, what he had to say. Because I, I find it interesting. The Jews there answered, We say you are a Samaritan. We say a demon is making you crazy. Are we not right when we say this? Jesus answered, I have no demon in me. I give honor to my father, but you give no honor to me. I am not trying to get honor for myself. There is one who wants this honor for me. He is the judge. I promise you, whoever continues to obey my teaching will never die. The Jews said to Jesus, Now we know that you have a demon in you. Even Abraham and the prophets died. But you say, whoever obeys my teaching will never die. Do you think you are greater than our father Abraham? He died, and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Jesus answered, if I give honor to myself, that honor is worth nothing. The one who gives me honor is my father. And you say that he is your God, but you don't really know him. I know him. If I said I did not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I obey what he says. Your father Abraham was very happy that he would see the day when I came. He saw that day and was happy. The Jews, Jews said to Jesus, What? How can you say you have seen Abraham? You are not even 50 years old. Jesus answered, The fact is, before Abraham was born, I am. When he said this, they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid, and then he left the temple area. Now in Genesis 22, uh, it tells the story about how God tested Abraham. 
Some time later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and the name Isaac means happy uh, in the uh, Jewish faith because Abraham was so happy uh, to finally have a son. Uh, he, he and his wife had waited uh, till they were like well into their 80s, 90s uh, before they were blessed with a son. And he only had one son. And go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain, I will show you. So God is wants him to sacrifice his only son on a mountain, I will show you. Why would God do this to Abraham? Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. And when he had enough uh, when he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, uh, Abraham, Father? Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. I can just imagine that Abraham... Uh, how much faith he had in God. <laughs> I mean, because God told him to sacrifice his one and only son. Uh, and and uh, and then his son, like, noticing, you know, hey, we don't have a lamb. W what's going on here, Dad? <laughs> when they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar. I suppose Abraham was, like, in no hurry to like sacrifice his son he probably he probably took his dear sweet time to build that altar i know i know i would on top of the wood then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son but the angel of the lord called out to him from heaven abraham abraham now i believe that this angel of the lord was jesus himself and uh, because Jesus, uh, um, he's always been around. You know, he was in heaven. He, he was right there with God, you know, uh, the whole time. And uh, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. Interesting that it was a ram, uh, because that seems to be the symbol of, of well, Lucifer. And I'm sure Lucifer, he was probably watching all this as well, and he probably took notice of it, you know. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. And through your offsprings, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Now, an interesting question uh, pops up whenever you talk about this story about Abraham. Because this story occurred 2,000 years before Jesus. 
uh, arrives. And at that time, 2,000 years ago, there, there wasn't any nation of Israel. It was just all mountains and everything. And, uh, uh, you know, Abraham is the father of, of the, the Israelites. He, 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 you know, he's considered the father <laughs> of them all, of that great nation. And, and so there wasn't even an Israel people. Uh, he, Abraham was it, you know. And uh, so uh, uh, people started realizing that the wording uh, of that area, um, you know, uh, matches up with where Jesus was crucified. And a lot of people have wondered, was this done on purpose? Uh, it was, you know, did Jesus and God... Did they want Abraham to go to the almost the exact place where Jesus, uh, where God was going to sacrifice His own Son two thousand years later, uh, and maybe a, there was some foreshadowing going on? You know that that you know Abraham was being shown what was going to happen to God's Son Jesus on that very spot, and so uh, the question is asked: Are they by each other? those two spots, the spot where Abraham was about to sacrifice his son and the spot where Jesus was crucified on the cross. And Tim Maz, he's a retired quality assurance specialist with the U.S. Army, uh, answers this question. My understanding is that there has been a correlation mentioned or suggested between Mount Moriah, that is the site where God told Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, and the Temple Mount, the site of the temple built by Solomon in Jerusalem, but not Golgotha specifically. Although the Temple Mount and Golgotha are, again, as I understand it, within approximately 300 meters of each other. But with the temple being within the old city walls of Jerusalem and Golgotha being outside the walls. Now, Mount Moriah... Um, actually means uh, uh, mountain of the skull because it, Mount Moriah actually looks like uh, a skull. So this is a picture uh, that I found on Google uh, depicting uh, Mount Moriah. And if you look at it, it, it does look like a skull. No doubt about it. I mean, you can see the eyes right there if you, you know, zoom in on that. And uh, kind of has a, a skull-like head and, you know, I mean, yeah. That is the mountain that um, God told uh, Abraham to, to uh, take his son to and sacrifice him there. And then Jesus showed up and said, no, 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 don't do that. But maybe 300 meters uh, by that site 2,000 years later, is exactly the spot where Jesus was crucified on the cross. And um, so here we have the fall of Lucifer. Here's another image of him. And in Isaiah 14, uh, chapter 14, verse 12, we read a little bit about the fall of Lucifer. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. On the farthest sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet you shall be brought down to Shoal, to the lowest depths of the pit. And here we have a picture of the serpent tempting Adam and Eve. In Genesis 3, verses 1 through 7, we we find the temptation of man. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may not 
eat fruit from the tree in the garden. But God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. You must not touch it or you will die. You will surely not die, or you will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And now, we're at a point here where... Um, Satan is tempting Jesus. Satan tempts Jesus, Matthew 4, verses 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, wow, afterwards he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Men, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God. And him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him. And behold, angels came and ministered to him. So now, um, I just want to real briefly talk about, get back to this, the, the character of my story here, uh, the new world leader that arises from the destruction of the comet or meteorite, uh, Wormwood, that caused a massive destruction around the entire world. Um, Many have tried to figure out uh, what will be his name. Because uh, I don't think he's going to go around calling himself uh, Nero. Uh, because, uh, well, that would. Nero kind of has a negative, uh, you know. Um, <laughs> Nero isn't all that respected uh in in um you know uh, in world history um there's stories where nero uh, apparently had been sleeping with his mom and then he tried to kill his mother uh and uh, uh one rather humorous incident was when his uh, uh he told his mom hey i, I want you to, to go travel in this boat you know with with, you know, uh, and so she did. She hopped on a boat, and uh, as they were out, uh, you know, uh, over in the Mediterranean Sea, uh, the soldiers uh, tossed his mom right out into the water, and then they, you know, left her to drown. And what uh, Nero didn't know was that his mom <laughs> knew how to swim, because. <laughs> Apparently, uh, you know, uh, she taught herself how to swim because she lived by the Mediterranean Sea and that was something she did as a kid. And Nero did not know that, had no idea his mom knew how to swim. And, and then she uh, wound up surviving and uh, she hid in a, uh, another castle with uh, her own armed guards protecting her. And uh, finally Nero had found out about it and uh, uh, basically he uh, he lied to her and said, Hey, Mom, I'm sorry I tried to kill you. Why don't you come back to the kingdom here and let's, let's, let's make up, you know? And, uh, yeah, he had her killed the second time around. Uh, 
that's just the kind of man he was. But uh, now, this person here, yeah, much like uh, you know, uh, God choosing Jesus uh, as His son, um, you know, all the angels were God's sons and daughters, and um, and uh, those that rebelled. It is said that uh, you know they, they were cast out of heaven, and um, apparently uh, there is some speculation that it was 666 uh, demons that fell from heaven uh, with Lucifer, and um, Jesus uh, uh, was chosen by God to be. You know, the son of man. And so Lucifer is basically, he's going to choose somebody within his own ranks. Uh, somebody within, you know, one of his followers, one of his generals. Um, he's he's going to choose somebody. And, uh, you know, he likes to mimic God. And there is one particular person person uh, that has some significance in Bible history and I believe that he is going to choose uh, a person that has a certain name to be his son uh, the son of Satan uh, the world new world leader during the tribulation period and that person will have this name and I'll talk real briefly about that now I'm not going to get into this whole article because it's really long but I'm just going to uh, talk about the, the crux of it the you know uh, the main point in Ezra 2 uh, verse 1 uh, we, we Ezra is telling the story about um, a band of a group of, of Israelites uh, that were have been held in captivity by the Babylonians for pretty eh, by, I don't know it's about like 80 years or so and uh, finally they had been allowed a group of them had been allowed to return to uh, Israel uh, uh, and they had been held there as slaves and uh, yeah they were allowed to leave Babylon and go back and, and to their home and uh, so we are told that um, that uh, uh, they now these are the children of the province that went up and out of the captivity of those which had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Israel, is uh, Babylon, had carried away onto Babylon, and then came again onto Jerusalem and Judea, every one onto his city. These were the children of. Adon Cam, Adon, Adon, Adon Cam. I'm gonna say Adon Cam. You know, if I'm gonna have a character in my book, I better know how to pronounce his name. <laughs> I'm gonna say Adana Cam. There we go. I think that that's the way you pronounce it, Adana Cam, Adana Cam. And the ch children of Adana Cam numbered uh, when they went when they left Babylon. Uh, they numbered 666 uh, when they went back to Israel. And I believe that Lucifer has a demon um, with the name Adonacam. And the name itself in Hebrew means Lord of Rising. That's what the name means. So, the person in my story, uh, that is the name that he will be going by. Uh, Antichrist. That is his name. He will call himself Adonacam, which means Lord Arising. And he will be Antichrist. He will be known as the Destroyer King, the uh, 
the demonic eighth king that's mentioned in the book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 11. So, this is going to end uh, part two of this story. And um, now I've got some work uh, because now I have to get on with the story itself. I've, I've provided uh, a ton of background stuff, <laughs> but now it's time to move on to the story and find out what happens. Uh, uh, how does Adana Cam, uh, how does he rise? Uh, to power and what does he do uh, while uh, he's got seven years uh, on this earth to run uh, and um, there's some interesting things that will happen and hopefully I will get to all of that in part three and uh, I thank you all for you know listening to this I, I hope you enjoy this story I, I've really tried to do uh, a, a lot of research uh, and, and I try to make it interesting, things that I've learned over all the years. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, hope, I hope you're enjoying this. Um, and this is my first stab at trying to put together a story like this. And uh, it, it is a rough draft, <laughs> you know, but you guys are actually getting to see the rough draft uh, as I write it. So... Uh, so I hope you, you enjoy it. Thank you and, and have a great day, Wisconsin Hugs.